welcome back. New video for you guys, one of my favorite casinos. It's a two and a half hour drive south from Los Angeles. It's called Agua Caliente. We get into the game for $300 and we look to our right and see one of our best friends, Marcelo, playing along with us. It's gonna be a good session. I wasn't joking, first hand of the night, we look down at pocket aces from the cutoff. Under the gun plus one limps, the middle position raises it to $8. And I'm gonna make a three bet here to $21. And both the limper and the middle position player call, so we're going three ways to the flop. Flop comes king, three, three, two diamonds. Having aces is good here because there's kings in other players' ranges. Additionally, there's a flush draw on board, so when the action checks to us, we make a 25% pot size bet here for $15. The under the gun plus one calls the 15, but the middle position player folds, so now we're going heads up to the turn. The turn comes to 10 of clubs, which doesn't change too much. We beat king 10, so we're not really worried about that. Additionally, the flush draw did not come in, so it's strange when the under the gun plus one now donks into us for $15. It's possible he's trying to name his price here with a flush draw or a weak king, just looking to get to a cheaper river and evaluate the situation from there. So we're not gonna have any of that. We raise him up to $42, which in hindsight, I think is a little bit small. I probably would have liked me raising to around $60 instead. Regardless, under the gun plus one puts in the call and we're off to the river. River's not so good of a card. It comes to Jack of Diamonds. Brings in some straights like Ace Queen. It also brings in the obvious front door flush draw. The only hands that we pretty much beat are King 10 and King Jack, obviously with our two pair. Under the gun plus one now donks into us again after we went for the raise on the turn. He goes all in for $140. He's pretty much repping a flush or nothing. I don't really think he has pocket kings or pocket tens the way he played this hand. Pocket threes is unlikely because that's quads, obviously, so it's pretty much a flush or nothing. We have two pair here, aces and threes, and we also have the ace of diamonds, which is an important card to block a lot of the flush draws that he would be doing this with. So for that reason, I flick in one chip, indicating a call. The opponent shows king jack, and we're gonna turn over our aces here and scoop that pot. I definitely think he overplayed it in this situation. Probably best just to go for a chuck call on the river. Next hand, we look down at six nine of diamonds from the big blind. Under the gun raises to eight. Middle position and the button both call. So we're gonna be putting in the additional $5 here from the big blind and we're off to a flop. Flop comes eight, seven, five. Bang, we flop the goods. We flop the nine high straight here. We can't be beat at the moment. There are some concerns with people boating up if they have a set or the potential front door flush spade draw that could come in on later streets. For that reason, I start with a bet here for $20. The under the gun and the middle position player put in the call, but the button gets out of the way. So we're going three ways to the turn. Turn with $85 in it comes the four of clubs, now bringing a club flush draw as well. It also puts a one liner to the six out there for the eight high straight. We actually kind of like this card because it brings in some more draws. It Additionally, it doesn't pair the board, which we were scared about. But I think it's likely if someone had a set, they probably would have raised the flop considering there was a lot of draws out there. We're not scared here. We go for a sizable bet here of $120, just looking to get value from two pairs, sets, any sixes that now made a straight. And we definitely want to be charging the two flush draws that are out there. Under the Gun doesn't like the size of our bet. He gets out of the way but the middle position player gets sticky and puts in $120. So we're going heads up to the river. River has $325 in the pot and it comes the seven of clubs. Really not the best card here because it pairs the seven and it brings in the backdoor club draw. I decided to bet small in this situation, just trying to get some extra value from some hands that we beat. I don't want to be betting too big here and then he jams and we're forced to fold a really good hand like the nine high straight. For that reason, I bet $40 and he pretty quickly puts in the call. He shows queen six of hearts for the eight high straight and we show our nine high straight and we're gonna take down this $405 pot in a cooler situation. We look down at pocket kings now from the big blind. There's a couple limps to me and I raise it up to $16 and just the player on my left in the under the gun position puts in the call. So going heads up to the flop, out of position here, which comes queen, nine, deuce, two diamonds. And with a couple straight and flush draw combinations out there, I decide to bet small here for around 25% of the pot. I bet $9 and the under the gun position player puts in the call. Off to the turn here, which brings in the front door flush draw comes the five of diamonds. We do have the king of diamonds in our hand, which is important to note because we block some combinations of that. For that reason, I decide to go for some value here, just targeting any queens or straight draws in the opponent's range here. I bet $70 
and uh, pretty quickly the onto the gun position player gets out of the way. So we're going to take down that pot with our pair of kings. Next hand we're on the button and we look down at Ethan or Rampage Poker as you guys know him's favorite hand pocket fours. One limp to me I raise it up to $12 and the small blind and the low jack put in the call so we're going three ways to the flop here. Flop with $39 in it comes ace, five, queen, two clubs and the action checks over to me. I'm on the button, I have position here and I also have initiative in the hand so I bet around 25% of the pot for $10 and the small blind and the low jack both put in the call so going still three ways to the turn. Turn comes a jack of spades now so king 10 gets there. The front door club draw still is a draw so when the action checks to me here I think we could be going for a sizable bet here targeting some queens, some club draws, etc. But I decide with pocket fours here to check back and see what happens on the river. River comes the three of diamonds which is pretty much a blank. I guess deuce four now gets there but we double block that with pocket fours in our hand. Small blind checks. Low jack now bets $28 here which is kind of strong. I think he would just be checking here with a lot of his queens, so it's probably likely he has an ace in his range here, and I don't really want to be bluffing and trying to blow him off an ace. I put in a fold here, and the small blind actually calls. Low jack shows king queen, so not the hand I expected him to have there, and the small blind shows pocket kings. It's likely that a bet on the turn or the river would have taken it down for us if we sized up there, but oh well. We're going to live to see another day. Real quick, if you guys are interested in playing in my Poker Bros Club, there'll be a link down below that'll take you right to the app and get you into the group. If you guys just want to add into it, it's Club ID 60381. I'm in there a couple times a week mixing it up. So definitely check that out if you guys are interested in it. And let's get back into the hands. Next hand, ace four of spades from the cutoff. Under the gun limps. I raise it up to $10 here with a nice hand like ace four of spades and the small blind, the big blind, and the under the gun limper all put in the call. So going four ways to the flop here with $40 in the pot. Flop is a great board for our hand considering we still just have ace high. It comes seven, five, three with two spades. We essentially have an up and down straight draw here with a gutter to a six and a deuce. We also have the nut flush draw with the ace high spades. The under the gun bet out into us for $16 and I think we could be going for a raise a large portion of the time here but out of position and with two players behind us here I'm hoping someone else in the hand has two spades and we can maybe cooler them on the turn or the river so I decide to keep them in and call for $16 unfortunately though the other two players fold so we're going heads up to the turn turn gives us top pair now it comes the ace of clubs and the under the gun position player puts in a check not really sure what he's representing here. He might have spades, although we do block that. He might have a pair and a straight draw. For that reason, I think I have the best hand here, and I'm going to be betting for $30. And the under the gun position player pretty quickly puts in the call, so we're going heads up to the river. River comes with six of clubs now, so we back into that seven high straight here. The under the gun checks again for the second time here. So we went from having nothing on the flop to top pair on the turn to now a straight on the river. I'm going to be jamming it all in here, just looking to get max value. He only has around $82 in his stack so it's not the largest bet here. He thinks about it for a little bit and then ultimately doesn't flick in a chip. He just says call. That's good enough for me. I flip over our seven high straight and he tosses his cards into the muck. We're going to take down that pot. Our stack's growing. We have 780 in our stack. We look down at 3-5 of hearts from the button. The under the gun position raises to $8 and the player on his left puts in the call. I should just be folding this hand a large portion of the time, but I want to get risky here. I raise it up to $32 and the under the gun position player calls, but his left puts in the fold. So we're going heads up to the flop here in position. Flop's a decent one for us. It comes king, jack, jack with two hearts. We can represent the kings and jacks in our range here with a bet. Additionally, if the player calls, we can back into some flush draws. Under the gun checks in flow to us, which is pretty standard standard and expected. We fire around a 33% pot size bet here for $21 and the under the gun position player calls. So we're going heads up to the turn which comes the queen of clubs. Not the best card we wanted to see here. Ace 10 now makes Broadway. Additionally, when he calls us on the flop, there is a chance he does have some kings and jacks in his range here. For that reason, I don't really want to get check raised here and face a large bet that we have to potentially call off or fold. The board is paired, so we have to be cautious of that. I decide to take a free card here and check behind. The river comes in 9 of spades, which doesn't change too much. It's unlikely that the opponent had 10-8 in his hand, but he fires for $120, which is indicative of a jack of straight or nothing. With just five high here, I'm not going to be putting him to the ultimate test and shoving for around $350. I toss my five high flush draw into the muck and he's going to take down that pot. 
720 now in our stack. We look down at nickels, as people like to call them, from the small blind. A few limps to me here, and from the small blind, I'm going to be going out of position here. So I raise it up to $17 total, and the big blind and the middle position limper put in the call. So going three ways to the flop. The flop with $54 in the pot is a pretty bad one. It comes ace, six, eight, monotone board. Additionally, there's some straight draws, although we do block five, seven. I start with a check here, just not looking to get too out of line. And the big blind and the middle position player both check as well. So we're going still three ways to the turn. Turn pairs the eight, it comes the eight of clubs now. And I think I would be playing an ace like this a good portion of the time. I would be checking an ace on a monotone board into two other opponents a large portion of the time. So when I bet here, for $20, I think that my story still makes sense. The big blind puts in the call, but the middle position player gets out of the way. So we eliminate one opponent here with our pocket fives. We're probably not good too often. And the river comes the three of diamonds. When we bet on the turn, we have to continue on the river when we don't improve. When the opponent decides to check on the flop and just call us on the turn, he's pretty capped as to what he can have here. If he had a flush or a strong ace, you probably would have bet the flop or raised the turn. So for that reason, I decided to put him to the ultimate test and I shove all in for 100 and forty dollars and luckily for us our play is rewarded here with a fold from the big blind and we're going to take down that pot with our nickels next hand we upgraded from nickels to dimes now we got pocket tens there's one limp to me I raise it up to $12, folds back around to the limper, who's the only person who puts in the call, so we're going heads up to the flop here. Flop comes 7, 4, 8, rainbow. The middle position player didn't have too much in his stack, and he decides he wants to play for all of it here. He shoves all in for around $40, and I make a pretty easy snap call. Turn comes the 4 of clubs. The river comes the ace of spades, which isn't the best card. The opponent sheepishly turns over 9-5 for what just amounted to 9 high here on the river. I turn over our pocket 10 and we scoop that last hand of the night. We rack up our chips and head to the cage. Holy crap, I guess that's a desert for you. One second, it's a 70 degrees and sunny, no wind. And the next minute you come out of the casino and it's like a 70 mile an hour wind turbine. You know what also was a wind turbine? That session. We got into the game for 300. Uh, we got out of the game for 814. No additional buy-ins, which is always great. So profit of 514. If you like this video, like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below. And I'll catch you guys as always in the next video. Thanks for all the support. Peace! Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.